Look at my finger. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> Rock on! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Hannah. <laughs> that was stupid. Who the heck is this guy? <laughs> what is up, Watch Trip? I'm Christian, uh, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Trip. I am Michael Tudor's missing piece. I saw a, a moon swatch today. Where? Let me see a picture. Just on the ground? Some dude was wearing it. No way. A gift from his client. Did you touch it? Oh, oh you put it on your wrist. I love it. Does it, um, does it just feel like plastic? Yeah, 100%. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, dude, it's bioceramic. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it feels just like bioceramic. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> You're like, oh, great. Oh, great. Uh, anyway. Today's a big day because uh, Watches and Wonders was today. <laughs> yep. And mm -hmm. Tudor and Rolex both released new watches, new novelties. Mm -hmm. And you had quite a crazy two days from high successes to lows to weird things. So I'm going to drive the boat. Dude, you drink your wine and just react. Dude, let's just do that. Just gargle some mouthwash. <laughs> so, new watches are released. We'll talk about those. And then we'll talk about the biggest point of this is that this release oddly resembled Rolex's. Mm -hmm. Rolo Rolex's collection, not their release. Yep. And the last thing is there is something getting slowly pulled away from Tudor, which is very weird. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm I looking know. For, I'm looking forward. Yeah. It's not a big thing, but All it's right. just enough where I was like, ooh, that was a defining characteristic of you. And you're taking it away. Interesting. And they did take part of it away. Today's conversation is sponsored by our friends over at Masterworks. Yes, the easiest way to invest in art. Yep. And very big name art, it's not not random art. Art investing for the people. It's democratized. It's incredible. So we'll yes. talk more about them later. Yes, sir. Um, but uh, yeah, let's bring in the first subjects. Let's talk about stuff. Hello, watch fam. This is your reminder just to open up a second tab and take a look at some of the watches in the Theo and Harris watch shop. Like this, Omega Seamaster. How beautiful. Looks like Christian's grandfather's. But it's not. Don't worry. Okay, the first subject, this Brodinky post, it's just a guy black bay everywhere. <laughs> to keep eating it. And, and we'll get into this in the end, but Tudor has legit devolved into stuff what looks like stuff you couldn't get from the other brand. Yeah. Hodinky obviously is a parody account, or Brodinky. <laughs> You said Brodinky has taken some shots at you before. Yep. If you do that again, I will find you. <laughs> I'm not letting go. Anyway, so um, really quick. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, like, you know, pursuant to like that comment there, I saw something on Facebook and it was like, Tudor's basically become an homage company. That is that is the end of this discussion because I saw all the like, releases today you know. and I was kind of like, hmm, which we'll get into later. Right. But we'll go over the releases really quick. If I start talking about a Rolex by accident, just steer me back I'll because just steer you it's back. you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So first thing first, Black Bay Pro. <laughs> Do you like it? Yeah, I, I love, love the Explorer too. <laughs> that was a joke we made. I love it. I think I, it's oh, cool. All of these watches, yeah. I think, are gorgeous. And the 39 millimeter steel case, steel case, 200 meters water resistance, big deal for me. Yep. The Explorer Two has 150, 100. Mm -hmm. Fixed bezel, dumb sapphire crystal, 70 hour power reserve. I also believe, obviously, there's a yellow GMT hand there, right? Yep. But I also do believe that the loom throughout is not white, but like eggshell or off white, which is not. It's it's oh. it's not it's not faux patina, but it's like it's just kind of color. faux patina. You know what I mean? Like it's softer. And you so like I that think it's, a lot. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Does modern patina still not burn like obviously does tritium did? But does it still age over time? Yeah. No. I mean, uh, no, no. Not a lot, right? If anything. Next up, this is the Black Bay GMT, steel and gold. Yep. That was the big kind it's of... It's a root beer, right? I mean... Yeah, it's exactly it's what it is. It's a root beer. I don't like that watch. Really? Yeah, I no. don't like it because it comes in 41. But also, this is what we'll see for the rest of these releases, steel and gold. That was right. the theme. It w There wasn't really a new watch besides the Black Bay Pro, which was huge. So do you remember when two-tone wasn't really a thing? Yes. That wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Then AP It was the did old a, old watch. Yeah, it was like old man stuff. Yeah. And then AP released the Two Tone Royal Oak. Yep. Right? And yep. Rolex did their Two Tone Explore. Like Two Tone has made a comeback in a very serious way. I love oh, Two Tone. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. My Santos Carre is, is two tone. Um I guess that's that's all I have that's two tone. But I do like Rolex root beers, some yep. of them at least. Um I do like two tone. You know, uh, uh, our friend uh now, Pick has a uh, the root beer, really, really beautiful. Watch, I pick, yep. um, yeah, rose gold. I think that it works better because it's rose. You know, yep, 100%. the problem there is that they've just become so expensive. That how do you keep it? You know, but exactly. But I do like two tone. Yeah. Um, that watch just does miss the mark for me. Too big for me. Oh, it's 41, definitely too 41 big. Forty-one millimeters, and then it being the black. Oh, and I think it's the pro. I'm not sure about the GMT, but the pro is 15 millimeters thick. 
That's very thick. Very, very thick watch. Wow. So that was one of the main things. It's girthy. Were, very girthy, which is actually more important than size on your wrist. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah, that's the. what I don't like about it is it's just another color release of Black Bay, basically. At the end of the day, it's a different color. Whee! You have the GMT feature. Whee! But that's it. Shut up, Tudor. <laughs> you know, so I was telling Michael before we're, we're working on a commercial with Tudor. It's all you know written, everything, all the concepts done. They were just waiting on. We were, we were going to do it with a watch that they already had in their collection, but instead we're going to do it with. They wanted to wait for this year's novelties to be released. So yeah. now we know that we're going to be moving forward with that commercial um, with the Pro. Because I, I do like the Pro. Um, oh yeah, it's going to be from my POV. So it is awfully convenient that I actually happen to really really like the watch. Yeah, um, right. For those of you guys that you know know me at all, like. Sports watches are not my thing. This Royal Oak is about as sporty as I get, and it's not it's really Royal very Oak. sporty. It's very, very thin. You know, yeah, I'm right. not a sporty watch guy. Yeah. Um, even that Black Bay, that Pro, yeah. I will wear that watch on a strap. Like, yeah, right, right. 99% chance that watch will never see bracelet on my wrist. Which I think, uh, I will say about the GMT too, I do think it looks gorgeous on a strap. Mm-hmm. Did you see pictures of it on a strap? I did. Okay, yeah. I think that gives it a little bit more... Not presence, but a stronger look to mm-hmm. me. But yeah, I totally agree. I also, as stuff like this comes out, I'm like, the least technologically difficult thing, I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, is to get this watch a little bit thinner. I don't know why it's that thick. Yeah, I don't know maybe why. Maybe the water either. resistance? I, mean, I, I don't know why it's that thick either. But 15 millimeters is, it's just, it's a very thick watch. It's a very substantial watch. How yeah. thick is a Samariner? Okay, so a Samariner so is 12.7. So three. Two and a half. Two and a half. Know. That is, that That's is a, a lot. 38 millimeter watch versus a. 40 in a little bit. Right. That's a big difference. It's a big difference. I wouldn't get a 40 in a little bit watch. I would get a 38. Yeah. That's big. Then we have the um, Chrono, steel and gold. But what is new about that? Oh, it's in gold dial as opposed to black dial? Yeah. Got it. So there's there's, the discussions at the end here, obviously. We're just kind of going through this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we have the new Black Bay 32, 36, 39, 41, steel and gold and diamond. Taking, look at the dial pattern. That's taken from like the old Rolex laser etched motif. And it's got a jubilee. And I got Julie. Do you like the uh, motif? This motif? Yeah. I'm not a fan of those. Neither am I. I'm not. Do you ever see like the Rolex one? They call it the Jubilee dial. It says Rolex all over it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I never like those. I, this looks too you cool. You have a computer and you can do something with the computer now. Right. I, I like yeah. old like it looks like some guy like chiseled away. I agree. And I, you know, also like so far as like I guess color and finishing and and whatever. I've always liked. Well, I did like recently like the. Not just the colors, but the matte finishes of the Rolex dials as yeah. opposed to the Sunburst. Sunburst is great. I love Sunburst, no doubt. But it has been really refreshing to see matte. Matte's different. You yep. know, we yep. saw it with the OPs, and they just discontinued the 41 and the 36 in uh, in coral and in yellow. In yellow right? Which are, it's happened today, so prices are going astronomically high. And it'll be interesting to see where they sell. Is the Tiffany blue discontinued now as well? I, I believe I, that's discontinued entirely. And we'll get into that next video Especially, but it looks like Rolex kind of was like, well, never mind on that color thing with the OPs. Interesting. We'll talk about that that later. I don't know why. Yeah. What do you think about this one, though? This black? Oh, black is great. I I think it looks awesome. That's a great watch. Yeah. This is an OP. Yeah, but like a fancy, yes, like a fancy OP. Yep, Yep. exactly. So we'll do Masterworks real quick, and then we'll get into the homage discussion, which I think is massive, and I'll tell you what's missing. Fantastic. Cool. All right, so let's talk about Masterworks for a second. Yes, Masterworks is, is an online platform. Uh, it's a tech company, really, that was founded by a tech entrepreneur and an art collector. Yes. Now they've got 325, 350,000 people that have, that have signed up to use their product. And their product basically democratizes art investing. Right? Art, art investing has, has proved, the art market has proven to be an incredibly strong market, outpacing the S&P over the last 20 years. In fact, I got this from Masterworks, we were talking recently. Since 2020, Masterworks has sold three paintings, each returning over 30% net IRR to investors, and their new offerings usually sell out in hours. Three paintings, Albit Olin's Doppelbit, okay. George Kondo staring into space, and Banksy, Mona Lisa. Very cool. I, did. Yes. I, remember, I remember hearing about that. He actually, he didn't invent Mona Lisa. He copied that. Little did we realize. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so Masterworks allows you basically, or enables you to participate in, in ownership through fractional ownership, right? So yes. you don't need to have a hundred million or whatever dollars to buy into the art market. You can start off with a relatively small account by signing up uh, 
through their platform, which I think is incredible, right? Totally. I see the same thing, you know, with, with, with watches, right? There are so many incredible opportunities out there that we simply can't seize unless we have this tremendous amount of cash. Well, Masterworks has fixed that problem. They fixed it in art, obviously, that's where their expertise is. Yep. But I think it's just a brilliant, I think it's a brilliant idea, and I think it's just a lot of fun as well, right? You get, right. To, you get to feel, because you, you feel like, because you are an owner of a very important historical piece you essentially even if you want to just barely get into art collecting and you don't want to own a piece yet but you're looking down the line you basically have this service which is also an investment of someone saying this piece of all predictions of like with all this research yep. with 1.6 trillion in assets or 1.7 trillion in assets yep. this piece is what we think is going to do well agreed so you're learning a ton from them and then they say do you want in do you want out and yes. if you want in then you change your mind you can then sell your piece to someone else right. and move on. So the total wealth held in art right now is estimated to be 1.7 trillion. Yep. And that's estimated to grow by 900 billion. Yeah, by, by Deloitte. Yes, by 2026. That's incredible. And Masterworks really is leading the way there. And they've done extremely well in that, again, with hundreds of thousands of, of people on their platform investing in art through them. Uh, even the Masterworks company now has become incredibly successful. Right? Exactly. They're valued now yeah. at, at a billion dollars. Right? So yeah. the, 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 the point is, we're not talking about, we're not talking about using a, a, a shady third party. We're not talking about using a, a, a shaky startup. We're talking about an extremely intelligent tech solution. And that's many reasons why I love Masterworks. They've got this tremendous tremendous understanding and reading of the market right? yeah. because they're, 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 they're art professionals, not just tech people, but they're art professionals. Yeah, right. So they're, they're, they're watching these markets and not just the art market in general, but the specific artists, right? Famous artists that we all know and, and admire that we see in the news. Picasso, Banksy, Warhol, is a Netflix documentary about him. Very cool, right? Yeah, so right. again, I, I just think that that is just, I think it's kind of, I mean, I'm not the kind of, I don't have enough money to buy it's like a crazy yeah, right, like, this, right. is, this is ridiculous on a different level, yeah. you know? So the fact that they're actually doing this for everyone is, is I, think, I think it's awesome. It's fascinating. So if you want to sign up for Masterworks, you can go to masterworks.io slash Theo Harris. I think you really ought to do that. Right. Me too. Thank you to Masterworks again. Everyone head on over and, and take a look. Get, get, get involved in art investing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, back to Tudor. Okay, so we're back. The first point, and I want to give you a little bit of area to run here, but the first point is just this release mm -hmm. very clearly shows... It seems like not this release, but in the next coming releases, they are turning into a Rolex homage company and not a company with a specific separate DNA. Yes. What do you think about that? Well, weren't they always a Rolex homage company? That's what I saw online today, you know, too. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. like, are you guys, in many ways, like, are you kidding me? You know, the whole beauty of Tudor, the entire beauty of Tudor was that you were getting the reliability and, in many ways, most of the quality. Um, that you would get with Rolex and the same designs yeah. for less money, right? With a little bit of flair sometimes, but really just color differences or the difference that they didn't use the Mercedes hands as often. They used these snowflake hands mm -hmm. or they used blue dial steel subs when Rolex didn't. I mean, otherwise, Tudor always was supposed to be a less expensive Rolex. That's it. Always. Here's an idea. What if they took it back to the 50s and 60s style and used Rolex cases and on the back, case by Rolex, when that DNA level? That would be very cool. I, I, don't, I don't know if that will happen, but that would be I don't, really cool. I don't cool. think it ever would, but then to me, that's almost like, it's stating what's happening, so it you don't get people being like, come on, this right. is an Explorer 2, this is GMT, this is that. People right. are like, wow, that is that is what has always happened, and that's very, very cool. I, I agree, and, and I think that obviously Tudor's already doing well, um, but but as Rolex continues to grow and more people can't get Rolex, right? Yep. Not because yep. they can't afford years years ago years ago, the reason you couldn't get a Rolex was not because it was not available, because it was too expensive. So Tudor was your solution. Right now you can't get Rolex because they're just ungettable, basically. Yeah. So Tudor is again the solution for a different reason. Exactly. Again, the solution. Oh, interesting. Yes. Yeah. That's so very so true. Tudor should in theory grow exponentially in the next well really now but in the next com coming three five years they should they should become a monster yeah again we talked about this a couple weeks ago i mean you know what is rolex has this tremendous demand they've never been more important they're mm -hmm. one of the most important brands in the world yeah and yet what are they doing are they, t are they taking advantage of all of that clout they haven't right. been able to blow right. up the Cellini line, yep. like we said. Yep. Uh, and Tudor's doing well, but is it doing as well as it should be? Is a good question. Yeah, right. You know, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with even like boutiques. I mean, our, you know, our our Rolex, our Rolex sales representatives, throughout in their entire interaction, mm -hmm. is there at any point where they mention their sister company? Probably not, right? Right. Yeah, of course. But that would be the logical thing. It would be like, hey, so that and this watch is unavailable. Yeah. Um, you know, we'd love to get you on the list, but also, I mean. 
Have you looked at? Have you looked at our it? sister? Right. You know, that's interesting. It's also interesting to think that pushing it in that way. Mm-hmm. I would be interested not to hear our take because I know ours, but the watch world and a lot of Brodinkies and everybody like that have mm-hmm. been like, "Are you kidding? This is this is literally it's Steinhardt now. These are just homage watches." Right. But it'd be interesting if Rolex and Tudor more visibly shook hands. Like if there was something that on Rolex's make, yes. website or something. It's like, I agree. well, also this. A more public admission would make sense. Yeah, because yes, it's it it's the omission that gets people being like, do I want the Explorer 2 or do I want the cheaper Explorer 2? But you know what's kind of interesting is, you know, while, while yes, this is these are homage watches. Yeah. These watches are more dissimilar to their Rolex counterparts than they ever were. The, the two yeah, Americans yeah. were fucking identical. That's what I was saying. Right? Like, it, They're actually quite different, so historically would, speaking. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. You look at uh, the original, what the Black Bay is based off of. Yeah. It looks like a Samariner with a different dial. 100%. Yeah. You, know? you look at the original big crowns, you know. You look at you look at everything across the line. I mean, you know, Tudor basically made identical watches to Rolex. Almost identical. And now they're... Very strongly inspired and borderline a ripoff, but they actually you, be, you bevels sizing crown lack of crown guards. Yeah. I mean there are there are great differences, but a more DNA for Tudor. One hundred percent. I mean they're intentionally going with the rivet bracelet. Yep. You know Tudor never did that. You know they were right, just following right. whatever Rolex would do. Tudor would do. Tudor, you know. Now here's the question: If you could get an Explorer Two, mm-hmm. an Explorer Two, an exact Explorer Two, mm-hmm. same case, ETA movement. Which is basically the original Tudor right. philosophy. Right. Same exact case. They changed the case back, so you know. And then it's an outsourced movement. Would you rather that over this, or if if you looked it's at the current market, call. where you're like, I should wait for a Rolex? It's a tough call. I mean, I like I like these Tudors. Yeah. I, I like the Pro. So do I. I do. Um, for me, you know, it's kind of funny. This wasn't your question, but it's coming down to size for me. The Explorer Twos are quite large, and, and this would this would actually be better for me at thirty nine. Yeah, which right. Is kind of funny, um, but um, it's a good question. I, I really don't know. Yeah. What about I you? think I think I would want the Rolex case, mm-hmm. plain and simple. Yeah. Even if it says "Case by Rolex" on the back, no as problem. Tudor. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Yes, it's interesting. I mean, they kind of are an homage company, but they always were supposed to be. And and frankly, while they're basically ripping them off. There are enough differences for us to say, you know, well, it's clearly still a Rolex, but Tudor is changing it up more than they did in the past. In theory, that's still not, you don't get a gold star yeah, for that. Right. But, and you know. you're looking back to the past as the 50s. Right. But it's still, yeah, I totally agree. Do you know the difference, the thing that is slowly disappearing? What? Something that made it stick out a lot when it first came out that everybody was kind of mentioning. No. The crown guard. Or, or sorry, the crown tube. The crown tube, yeah. Look at that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was... Obviously, if you look at the Pro Case, too, it is kind of slendering and becoming yeah. more Rolex. But yeah, wow. When Tudor first... When the Black Bay first came out, I remember all I could look at was that little that aluminum colored, tube. It was a colored tube, right? It was a colored tube, and it stuck out. And it's still here on some models, but it does look like it's slowly kind of like... They're just pushing it in. Interesting. Which I always... When, I, when they first came out... I think it was in high school. I don't know when mm-hmm. they came out. But I... Didn't like that tube. Yeah. I was like, that actually kind of annoying. Also, look at the size of the logos. Do you agree that the logos seem a lot smaller now than when they were introduced? Am I wrong? Am I, am I seeing things? No, they look pretty similar to me. Uh, yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, Whatever. I just thought that was interesting. If, if we're trying to predict next year and next year and next year, because what we'll talk about in Rolex 2 is watches haven't changed in a very, very long time. Right. And in the next review, we'll talk about Omega and Rolex, because I realized something driving here, actually. Mm-hmm. But... In a very, 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 very long time, watches have not changed. Right. So you can't talk about, oh my God, look at this. But in the next five years, I expect this case shape to dramatically look more like Rolex. Okay. And I expect some DNA of Tudor to go away slowly. Do you think that we'll ever see crown guards in the black thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. You know why? Why? Because Rolex is a new release. The Air King. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's just like oh this is a button we could push, we don't want to change the design of this super crazy watch right a lot, but this will get people talking just enough and then we'll move on. Interesting. What do you think? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, it, that seems to me like the one bridge that Tudor won't cross, but mm, mm. maybe that's you know maybe I'm wrong. I think I think literally if you could have the Black Bay and time lapse at five years, you would just kind of see it melt to the yeah. same case. You'd see yeah. the crown go in and then maybe crown guards. Come You're out. totally right. That's Especially with the Jubilee on this, that's the, that's like the subtle like oh, oh yeah, that's, that's a, a yeah. big change. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean that's the Lady Date Just, you know. I mean that's it's, exactly it's, what it yeah, is. Yeah. Absolutely. I and mean, you could probably even put you put like a Lady Date Just with it with a with a um, K 
computer dial like next to that in two tone and you do the fucking same watch. You can't tell. Yeah, yeah same watch. And especially to the average, I don't mean like to the average woman, I just mean like to the average buyer for that that isn't a big watch person, they wouldn't even necessarily like know. No, no, like, no, no. I don't know. It's it's right. It makes sense. Yeah. They're like, take the tutor. Can I buy it? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Cool. That's well, it. Well, then there you go. Good job, Tudor. I think you did. A, I, think, I, I think you did a pretty cool job with the Pro. I'm looking forward yep. to wearing that watch. I'm looking forward to make a commercial about that watch. Yep. Um, it's gonna be great. I think it's gonna be great. I hope you guys are looking forward to that commercial as well. Um, it's beautiful. It's gonna be on the city. It's gonna be very, very cool. Yes. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for leading the live. Thank today, you. My I hope your finger gets better. Thank you.